1996, one verdict in court in Ohio, and the entire plan to transform today's transportation system fell in trap to the brink of extinction. It happened when the court deemed the plan to replace today's fossil fuel burning mechanism with water to run the engine, known as water-powered engine, futile and utterly impractical. This idea of transformation of fossil fuel was the brainchild of Stanley Mayer, the guy who out of his hundreds of patented ideas took on to demonstrate the whole world how the water can be the next substitute and a slap on the face of the Middle East when they refused to supply any oil to the US. The court at its hearing didn't like the theory at all and considered it another piece of cheap replication with nothing so exciting about it. But what sinisterly twisted the plot was the abrupt demise of the inventor, Stanley, just two years after this incident, graving both his death and, most importantly, the invention that he wanted to shed lights on. With his mysterious death, he also deprived the world of acknowledging his would-be great inventions that could have changed the foundations of today's transportation system. So, who or what was behind the strange death of Stanley Meyer and the water-powered engines? Let's find out. If we need to go deeper into the story, we have to know how Meyer got himself into this scene. Well, his full name was Stanley Allen Meyer, and he was one of two identical twin brothers. Both of them were born on August 24th, 1940. His brother's name was Stephen Meyer. The Meyer brothers were born on the east side of Columbus, Ohio. But eventually, their family moved to Grandview Heights. That's where Stanley finished his high school education. After finishing school, Stanley decided to enlist in the military instead of going to college. From his young age, Stanley was quite the inventor. He came up with several patents in various fields like oceanography, heart monitoring, and even banking systems. What's really interesting is that it only took eight months for all of Stanley's patents to be approved. That was pretty fast, especially since there were over 200,000 other patent applications waiting in line at the time. This quick approval shows that the patent office likely saw Stanley's inventions as something special and trustworthy. Stanley worked at the Battelli Memorial Institute in Ohio, which is a major research and development organization. He also spent some time at NASA, where he helped with the Gemini project. Then, in 1973, things took a turn when the United States was under President Richard Nixon. He began to support Israel, which upset many countries in the Middle East. In response, members of the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries decided to stop trading oil with much of the Western world. That decision made oil prices shoot up by about three times their original cost on average. That's where the very first spark of water cars took place. Stanley was deeply affected by the oil crisis and decided to look for new ways to power vehicles. He became obsessed with the idea of using water as fuel. After countless attempts and experiments, he finally succeeded. He built a machine that could run solely on water. Stanley was convinced that this breakthrough could transform the world and reduce our reliance on oil. Stanley discovered how to split water into its basic elements using a process called electrolysis. This method breaks water down into two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. His engine used the hydrogen as fuel and expelled the oxygen through the exhaust. What made Stanley's invention unique was that it ran directly on water and performed the splitting process itself. In contrast, Modern hydrogen cars use pure hydrogen as fuel. He claimed that his water fuel cell could power a dune buggy, which he demonstrated on an Ohio TV station. According to Meyer, you could travel from Los Angeles to New York using just 22 gallons of water with his machine. He explained that he replaced the spark plugs in the engine with injectors that mixed hydrogen and oxygen to generate power. The water fuel cell worked by first splitting the water into hydrogen and oxygen gas through electrolysis, then burning these gases in the engine to produce water vapour. To make the invention a real success, Meyer was seeking limelight and hence travelled across the country to show off his invention and even convince some investors. He showed off his invention with a lot of flair and there were videos and photos of his car surrounded by curious onlookers. 
But things didn't go as planned. There was a lot of skepticism surrounding Meyer's claims. Despite the hype, there was no clear independent verification of how the engine actually worked. No one could confirm if the car was genuinely powered by water alone, or if Meyer's claims about his technology were nothing but guesswork. There were no concrete tests to prove it, and many felt the invention was more hype than substance. In 1996, the situation took a serious turn. Some small investors who had put money into Meyer's project started getting worried when they saw the project wasn't progressing as expected. They suspected they might lose their money and decided to take the issue to court. The court in Fayette County, Ohio, took the issue seriously and appointed three experts to check out Meyer's car. But Meyer refused to let them inspect it, which didn't work in his favor. The experts then reviewed the information they had and found it to be quite ordinary. They noted there was no solid evidence that proves that it could effectively power an automobile engine. They found it to be pretty basic and saw no solid proof that it could actually power a car. In their view, Meyer's process didn't offer anything revolutionary. As a result, the judge decided that Meyer had committed serious and blatant fraud. The court ordered him to pay back the money he had taken from investors. This was a huge blow for Meyer, who had built his reputation on this invention. Losing the money and damaging his reputation was a major setback for him. To make things even more dramatic, Meyer had claimed that he was threatened by people from big oil companies. He even said that he was offered a large amount of money to stop working on his technology, but he supposedly turned it down. Some people thought these claims were far-fetched and suspected that Meyer might have been overly paranoid about the threats. Things turned more complicated when a scientist tried to investigate Meyer's technology as part of the legal case. Michael Lofton, an expert in electrical engineering, wanted to verify whether Meyer's invention worked the way he claimed but Meyer refused to let him scrutinize. He came up with excuses not to question his invention, and Lofton found those excuses to be weak and unconvincing. Meyer by all means wanted to resist his dune buggy being tested, even when the conditions could have protected his technology. But his resistance only made people more doubtful about his claims. Despite all the media attention Meyer received and the high-profile demonstrations he gave, his invention was never subjected to thorough scientific testing or peer review. This meant that his claims about the water-powered car were never officially verified or proven. Without this kind of formal evaluation, it was difficult to know for sure if his invention could do what he said it could. After just two years, on the 21st of March, 1998, something strange and tragic happened with Meyer. Stanley Meyer was enjoying lunch with three others at a local restaurant. Near the end of the meal, he ordered cranberry juice as a final treat. As Meyer took a sip, something went horribly wrong. He suddenly sprang up, panic in his eyes, clutching his throat and gasping for air. He stumbled outside into the parking lot, his brother Stephen by his side. In his final moments, Meyer collapsed to the ground. His last haunting words were, they poisoned me. The sudden and mysterious nature of his death left everyone shaken and searching for answers. Stanley Meyer, the man who had claimed to invent a second-to-none technology, just met his end in a mysterious way. His sudden death shocked many, especially those who knew about his invention. But now, the man who wanted to change the world was gone. To investigate the case properly, the lead detective on the case, Steve Robinette, took the charge immediately. He collected statements from everyone who had witnessed Meyer's collapse, including the other three men who were with him at the table. Among them, one was Stanley's brother, and the two other people were probably his investors. Despite the strange circumstances of Meyer's death, Robinette carried out a detailed investigation. He also took a toxicology test. However, no traces of poison were found in Meyer's body. The coroner stated that Meyer had died from a brain aneurysm, which made sense because he had a history of high blood pressure. Within three months, the case was officially closed and marked as death by natural causes. But even though it was considered solved, many people couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to the story. Was it really just a natural death? Or had Stanley Meyer been silenced because of his invention? 
Who were the men sitting at the table with him that day? Some say they were friends and family, while others believe they were Belgian businessmen interested in investing in his water fueled technology. If Meyer truly believed he was poisoned, the question becomes, who did it? Did he suspect one of the men sitting with him? Or could it have been someone working at the restaurant? There's even the possibility that someone had been following Meyer, waiting for the right moment to strike. Over the years, the idea of cars running on water has fascinated people. Though the technology still is confined to paper, it really sounds amazing. Who doesn't want to get a limitless fuel source? However, turning this concept into reality has been quite difficult. Even with the challenges, companies and inventors haven't given up on trying to make water-powered cars work. One of the most recent and noticeable attempts comes from automotive giant Toyota. They've developed a unique water-cooled hydrogen combustion engine to solve some of the big challenges that come with using hydrogen as fuel. What makes Toyota's engine different is that it injects water directly into the cylinders, unlike traditional engines that mostly use air for cooling. The problem with hydrogen engines is that they generate extremely high temperatures, over 2500 degrees Celsius, which can damage engine parts and require strong, heavy materials to keep everything working. Toyota's solution is both simple and clever. They use water to cool the engine block and cylinder head. The water absorbs the heat and prevents any kind of damage. This also means they can use lighter materials, like aluminum instead of steel, which makes the car more efficient by reducing its weight and improving performance. But what really makes this engine special is how it operates. Toyota's hydrogen engine runs at much higher temperatures than a regular gasoline engine, where the usual range is about 600 to 650 degrees Celsius. It happens because of the water cooling system. Toyota's engine can withstand the extreme heat, which in turn makes the combustion process more efficient and cleaner. This counted as a huge step forward in making hydrogen-powered engines non-polluting and capable of delivering better fuel efficiency. Toyota's engine also has a unique dual injection system. It allows both direct and port fuel injection of hydrogen. In simpler terms, hydrogen can be injected directly into the combustion chamber when the engine needs extra power, ensuring complete combustion, especially at higher speeds. This kind of smart injection system makes sure the engine runs smoothly and efficiently under different driving conditions. So why is this such a big deal? Up until now, most hydrogen engines have struggled to manage the high temperatures generated during combustion, and they've required heavy, bulky materials that weighed down the car. Toyota's water-cooled engine design changes the game by allowing engines to run hotter, but in a way that doesn't harm the engine, making them lighter, more efficient, and zero emissions at the same time. This opens up new possibilities for hydrogen-powered cars, bringing us closer to a future where clean, water-powered vehicles could become mainstream. Toyota isn't the only one working on using water as a fuel source. Another interesting project comes from Genipax, a Japanese company. They've developed a system that pulls hydrogen right out of water to power a car. Instead of storing hydrogen in tanks, which is tough and costly due to the need for super low temperatures, Genipak's system makes it right from the water itself. Simple and smart. According to the company, their water energy system can take any kind of water, whether it's from the sea, a river, or rainwater, and use it to power a small car. They demonstrated a mini car that could run at speeds of 80 kilometers per hour on just one liter of water. If true, this would solve many problems, including the need for hydrogen storage tanks, which are often costly and heavy. However, this technology has faced its own set of criticisms. Many scientists argue that it goes against the first law of thermodynamics, which says that you can't get more energy out of a system than you put in. Essentially, the amount of energy needed to break down water into hydrogen and oxygen would be more than the energy the fuel cell produces to power the car. This raises doubts about the actual feasibility of Genipax's system. Some people think that if Genipax's technology was real, it'd be like finding a perpetual motion machine, something that could run endlessly without stopping. 
The idea is that the water produced when making hydrogen could be recycled to keep the car going forever. It sounds amazing, but it also seems a bit too good to be true. Many folks believe Genopax might have messed up their calculations. If we talk about other recent and notable efforts, it was made by a Swiss-French company called Nanoflow Cell AG. In 2015, they unveiled a line of cars that run on water. While this concept caught a lot of attention, the company has faced quite a bit of skepticism and criticism. However, they're still in business and pushing forward with their idea. Now, Nanoflow Cell's cars don't burn HHO gas like some might expect. Instead, they operate on a flow system that uses electrolysis to power a fuel cell. It's a bit different from Stanley Meyer's original design, but it still counts as a water-powered vehicle in many respects. The main challenge with water-powered cars isn't the idea of using hydrogen as fuel. Hydrogen itself can power a car just fine. The issue lies in extracting hydrogen from water through a process called electrolysis, which usually takes up a huge amount of energy. For water-powered cars to be practical, this energy problem needs to be solved. At the moment, the energy required for electrolysis is so high that it offsets the potential benefits of using hydrogen as a fuel. One idea for the future is to use excess energy from renewable sources like wind or solar to produce hydrogen through electrolysis. This way, the surplus energy could be stored as hydrogen and used later to power vehicles. It's a promising approach, but we're not quite there yet. When we talk about the future of water-powered cars, it's uncertain. There's still a lot of work to be done to make these vehicles truly clean, efficient, and viable for mass adoption. The technology has been around for decades, but no car manufacturer has made significant strides to get it to a level where it's ready for the everyday driver. Stanley Meyer's water-powered car is still one of the most talked about attempts, even though it's wrapped in mystery and controversy. His idea of using water as fuel really captured people's imaginations. Despite the doubts and debates, it still sparks inspiration for innovators today. Meyer's legacy is a reminder of what happens when you dare to think outside the box, even when the conventional wisdom says otherwise. Interestingly, even Elon Musk has spoken about the idea of a water-powered car. In an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast in 2023, Musk mentioned that he had working prototypes of such a car. However, when asked about when these vehicles would be available to the public, his response was, probably never. The government is not allowing us to continue our research and take our prototypes. He went on to say, it will probably be out for the public when we are completely out of oil. That's the point in history where water costs more than gold. This statement further stirs the pot of conspiracy theories and debates around water-powered technology. So if you've come this far, you now know that the story of Stanley Meyer's water-powered engine is one of innovation, controversy, and tragedy. Despite his bold claims of changing the entire transportation world, the technology never gained solid scientific validation. And Meyer's sudden death added even more mystery to his life's work when he claimed he had been poisoned as his last words. However, his death left many questions unanswered. While some companies are now trying to hop on the water engine technology, the real potential of Meyer's water engine remains a mystery to this day. Whether he was a victim of foul play or just misunderstood, Meyer's story is an unfinished chapter in the ongoing search for new energy solutions.